Hello, and welcome back to the ICU doc. This is Tamaris Baronos, and here's another lecture on perioperative and critical care transthoracic echo. In today's presentation, we will talk about how to measure the tricuspid regurgitin pressure, as well as the right ventricular systolic pressure. The right ventricular systolic pressure can be estimated using the modified Bernoulli equation, which is the following. The pressure difference between two chambers equals 4 times V square, where V is the velocity of a regurgitin jet between the two chambers. We will use the modified Bernoulli equation for the tricuspid regurgitin jet. So 4 times V square is the gradient between the right ventricle and the right atrium. With simple math, the same equation becomes P1 equals 4 V square plus P2. The velocity we're now looking for is the tricuspid valve regurgitant jet velocity. So the equation becomes right ventricular systolic pressure equals 4 times the peak tricuspid regurgitant jet squared plus the right atrial pressure. The right atrial pressure estimation was described in a previous video, and I will put a link in the description if you would like to refresh your memory. Velocity measurements are angle dependent, thus it is better to measure the tricuspid regurgitin velocities from multiple views and use the one with the highest velocity. Commonly, you will find good tricuspid regurgitin jets in the right ventricular inflow view or the apical four-chamber view. Once you're happy with your view, you add color to the tricuspid valve and you look for any regurgitin jets. Once you find the jet, you add continuous wave Doppler right through it. It is important to note that you must use continuous wave Doppler and not pulse wave Doppler. Continuous wave Doppler through a tricuspid regurgitation jet looks like this. It is important to note that the Doppler is a negative deflection since the jet is moving away from your probe. Adequate signals are the ones that have well-defined borders. The only thing you have left to do is measure it. You take the pointer and you measure the velocity at the peak. In this case, we measure it to be 336 centimeters per second or 3.36 meters per second. We can now take this velocity and use it in the modified Bernoulli equation to estimate the right ventricular systolic pressure. As I showed earlier, the right ventricular systolic pressure equals 4 times the velocity squared plus the right atrial pressure. So 4 times 3.36 squared equals roughly 45 millimeters of mercury. Now for the right atrial pressure, if you have a central line, you can use that to measure the central venous pressure. If you don't have a central line, you can use the inferior vena cava size and collapsibility, as I showed in a previous video, to derive the right atrial pressure. In this case, the IVC maximum diameter is 2.3 centimeters, and it is less than 50% collapsible. So the right atrial pressure is estimated to be 15, so the right ventricular systolic pressure will be 45 plus 15, which is 60 millimeters of mercury. Once you have the TR jet peak velocity, you plug it into the modified Bernoulli equation and you get the right ventricular systolic pressure. Normal values are usually defined as peak TR gradient of less or equal to 2.8 meters per second. TR peak velocities of more than 2.8 meters per second correspond to a systolic pulmonary artery pressure of about 36 millimeters of mercury and that is assuming that the right atrial pressure is between 2 to 5. In this table, I also included the severity cutoff points for pulmonary hypertension so that we put the numbers in perspective. Mild elevation of the right ventricular systolic pressure is 36 to 45, moderate 45 to 60, and severe more than 60 millimeters of mercury. This is a TR jet from the parastonal short axis right ventricular inflow view. As you can see, we have a much better quality of a Doppler signal since the borders are much better delineated and we can easily measure them. The ultrasound machine is giving us a TR pressure gradient using the modified Bernoulli equation. 
we can just add the right atrial pressure to it, which is in this case 3. And we get the right ventricular systolic pressure, which is indicative of mild pulmonary hypertension. This summarizes the lecture on the estimation of right ventricular systolic pressure. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out our website, YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the lectures, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share.